Hello. This lecture on the skeletal system is going to focus on the process of bone development and how joints work. So to understand bone development, you first need to know what cartilage is. Cartilage is a dense, flexible, connective tissue. While cartilage is important in bone development, we continue to have it through our adult lives. For example, the tip of your nose and your ears are made out of cartilage. Ossification means the process of forming bones. Bones initially begin as cartilage forms in embryos. Osteoblasts begin to secrete minerals around themselves during the first trimester of pregnancy. Now once an osteoblast is completely surrounded, it becomes an osteocyte. After a baby is born, bone growth can continue and it continues through growth at growth plates. Growth plates are sections of cartilage at the end of bone that allow bones to continue growing after birth. Now, most ossification is not complete till between 16 to 20 years in females and 18 to 25 years in males. They can check to see if, you're, if you are still able to grow by taking an x-ray of your hand. Um, if your growth plates are still active, they can see them. Um, they, they look like they're separated from the bone um, in your hand. Once they have ossified, um, you can't see them anymore. They've become part of the bone. From here on out, we're going to talk about different types of joints. Now, a joint is any two place, uh, blah, blah, blah. it is any place two bones connect. There are three different groups of joints. The first type of joint is an, immo an immovable joint. This is a joint where there is no motion possible at all. A common example of a, an immovable joint would be your skull. When you touch the top of your head, it doesn't wiggle, even though there are bones that have joined together there. The next type of joint is a slightly movable joint. This is a joint that allows small amounts of movement. An example of this would be the motion that can occur between two of your spinal vertebra. While your spine it all together is quite flexible, the amount that any one vertebra can move is quite constrained. They're, they don't have a ton of movement. The last type of joint is a freely movable joint, and a freely movable joint allows movement in one or more directions. In the next couple slides, we're going to talk about different types of freely movable joints. So the first two types of freely mo movable joints. The first one is a pivot joint. And in a pivot joint, one bone rotates around another bone. If you want to see what this looks like, sit up, stick your, ten your chin out in front of you, and rotate your chin so that it is over your left shoulder. The top of your neck connects to your skull in a pivot joint. And you just allowed it to pivot. Another way that you can do it is if you place your hand outstretched directly in front of you, and then turn your thumb so that it goes from the facing the inside of your body to the outside of your body. If you watch, you can see that one of the bones in your lower arm pivots around the other bone. The next type of freely movable joint is a saddle joint. A saddle joint occurs when one bone can slide in two directions. Now your wrist is made up of many bones. And the bones in your wrist are saddle joints. They can slide in two different directions. An, a joint that's easier to isolate would be the knuckle at the base of your fingers. So if you look at your thumb, you can slide your thumb up and down, and you can slide your thumb side to side. It is difficult, though, to slide your thumb on a diagonal. And that's because you're dealing with a saddle joint. Another type of freely movable joint is a ball and socket. A ball and socket allows movement in many different directions. Now, the best example of a ball and socket joint would be your shoulder. Starting with your arm at your side, you can raise your arm straight up so that it's over your head, and then rotate it so it is straight in front of you, swing it down so it is parallel to your legs, and then roll it all the way up in a circle behind you. Um, so as you can see, your shoulder has motion in almost a 360 degree direction. Your hip is also a ball and socket. Um, you do not have as much flexibility in your hips, not because of the shape of the joint, but because there's so much muscle attached 
to the hip that you've lost some flexibility. You did, however, gain power in your hips compared to your shoulders. Last type of freely movable joint that we're going to talk about is the hinge joint. A hinge joint allows a back and forth movement in one direction. You a good example of hinge joints are your knees and elbows. So if you put your if you're sitting down, take one of your legs that is bent at the knee and stretch it so that your foot is pointing out in front of you. Now relax it back down again. This is an example of a hinge joint. You can move your leg in one direction, forward and backwards. Um, if you try and move your, your knee from side to side, um, you can't move your knee side to side. You can rotate your hip side to side, but if you actually move the knee side to side, you start tearing um, ligaments and tendons, which is not a good thing. The last thing that we'll talk about today are some other parts of joints. Um, cartilage, which we talked about at the beginning of this lecture, um, acts as a cushion between joints. Now, arthritis is a very common disorder among middle-aged and older adults, and that's what happens when cartilage between the bones is damaged. Ligaments are tough connective tissues that connect bones to bones and joints, while tendons are tough connective tissues that connects bones to muscles near joints. That's the end of our show for today. Thank you very much for listening.